The crowd roars as goal after goal is kicked and handball after handball is made in the SA NFL final between two Australian rule football teams, Norwood and North Adelaide. However, between the celebration and anticipation, two young girls walk to the bathroom, never to be seen or heard from again. This is the unsolved disappearance of Joanne Ratcliffe and Christy Gordon. The Adelaide Oval, located in Adelaide, South Australia, is a popular sports ground often used to host sports games such as Australian rules football, cricket and rugby, whilst also occasionally being used to hold concerts. In late August of 1973, the ground was hosting an SA NFL football match between Norwood and North Adelaide. As this was a finals match, a large crowd was in attendance, including four-year-old Christy Gordon, Christy's grandmother, 11-year-old Joanne Ratcliffe, Joanne's parents, and a family friend of the Ratcliffe's, only known by his first name, Frank. Christie's grandmother and Joanne's parents were friends, often seeing each other at these AFL matches. At this particular match, the families found themselves seated next to each other. Despite being very young girls, Christie's grandmother and Joanne's parents permitted them to go to the bathroom together at two points during the game, as the pair were friends. According to one source, this was despite the fact that the Ratcliffe family had enforced a rule whereby the children were not permitted to go to the bathroom at any point during the game or during the final quarter of the match. On the second occasion, the young girls left for the toilet without any issues. However, as the minutes ticked by and the children had not yet returned, their families began to worry. After 15 minutes, Christy and Joanne had not yet returned. Their families then began to search for the pair. After some initial resistance, Kathleen Ratcliffe, Joanne's mother, was able to make an announcement on the Oval's PA system, calling for the girls. Unfortunately, they were not able to locate the pair, and thus, shortly after 5pm, the police were called, advising them of the disappearance. Upon discussion with witnesses, law enforcement realized that Christy and Joanne had been seen on a number of occasions in the 90 minutes between when they had left for the bathroom and when the announcement was made over the PA system. Their first sighting was with a group of other children. The pair, along with these children, were playing with a stray cat who was meandering through the stadium. Joanne was also sighted very distressed and agitated, being accompanied with an unknown man who was carrying Christy. Joanne was reportedly hitting, punching, and screaming at this man to put her down. Witnesses, unaware of the disappearance, assumed that the suspect was simply a parent with his upset children. Finally, the girls were last spotted on a bridge near the Adelaide Zoo, a short distance from the Oval. A 14-year-old girl by the name of Sue Laurie, who was visiting the zoo with her father and sister, had been the one to see a man with two girls on the footbridge. She told under investigation that she, quote, saw a man coming at a rapid pace towards us on the gravel path, carrying a young child. She further noted that there was a second girl following behind the man, who was, quote, absolutely punching this man as hard as she could in the back and saying, put her down, put her down. The description that Sue provided of this man matched the sighting of other witnesses, and it was from these eyewitness accounts that police were able to produce a composite sketch of the suspected kidnapper. Throughout the investigation, there were a few main theories and suspects. This included a man by the name of Stanley Arthur Hart. According to some reports, Hart was an avid football fan who would consistently attend North Adelaide matches. It would be revealed a decade after the initial abductions that he was a child abuser. Joanne's sister, Susie, would later say in 2023 that she believed Hart was the abductor. However, he wasn't the only suspect. Errol George Rodan was a repeat offender who was imprisoned in 1984 for the indecent assault of a young girl. An alleged previous victim of Rodan, who was sexually abused around the time of the young girl's abduction, claimed that he bore a resemblance to the police sketch of the suspect. Finally, another man by the name of Arthur Stanley Brown, a convicted child rapist and murderer, was also considered a suspect. Brown abducted two young girls, Judith and Susan McKay, aged 7 and 5 respectively, as the girls walked to school in the area of Townsville in Queensland. 
he too bore a striking resemblance to the police sketch. Some theorists have also suggested a connection between Christie and Joanne's disappearance and the disappearance of the Beaumont children. The Beaumont children, Jane, Anna and Grant, were three siblings who all disappeared from Collie Reserve, an area not too far from Adelaide on the 26th of January 1966. It is believed that all three were abducted and likely murdered. According to witness accounts from the time, the suspect was a middle-aged man who eerily also resembled the police sketch of the man who abducted Christy and Joanne. However, despite numerous eyewitness accounts of the suspect, the disappearance of the young girls eventually reached a dead end, and thus the case remains unsolved. A monetary award is still available for information leading to the discovery of the girls, or information leading to a conviction. At the time of her disappearance, Christy was approximately 3 foot 4, with blonde shoulder length hair and blue eyes. She has faint freckles and a scar above the bridge of her nose, as well as birthmarks below her hairline and at the base of her spine. She was last seen wearing a purple jumper, a pleated white skirt, white tights and brown laced shoes. At the time of Joanne's disappearance, her dark brown hair was tied in pigtails. She is described as having a medium build and was last sighted wearing black jeans, a black tank top, a white shirt, white socks and white shoes. These two painfully young girls were ripped violently and unforgivingly from their families. Time has marched on and their case has grown cold, but their families have never given up. Please, if you have any information, do not hesitate to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 000 or visit the Crime Stoppers South Australia website. Their link is in the description box below. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe and be well. This has been Philo5 Declassified. I'll catch you in the next one.